Described as a visionary, transformational leader, and thoroughbred professional, the late Prince Emeka Obasi, founder of Business Hallmark Newspapers, was a national icon who believed in the country's immense potential. This was the basis for the Prince Emeka Obasi inaugural memorial lecture, which was convened at the Muson Center in Lagos. It featured a national discourse on If These Giants Must Walk, a new manifesto for Nigeria, with the chairman of the occasion and former governor of Cross River State, Mr. Donald Duke, setting the tone for the conversation. Let me put some perspective to this conversation. In between 1979 and 1983, while Sheo Shagari was president of Nigeria, his annual budget hovered around $25 billion. And you can verify that yourself. Uh, Nigeria's annual budget consistently for the four years was about $25 billion. Our population was about 80, 90 million at the time. That was over 40 years ago. Today, our population is, as we say, we don't know, but we say it's over 200 million, 215, 220 million. Our annual budget is $19 billion, 40 years after. I say this to bring to context, the real context of where we are as a people. So it's not, it's not for the giant to walk, it's how you're walking. Are you walking, are you moonwalking or are you walking forward? If you're moonwalking, which is what we've been doing for the last 40 years, you're moving backwards. So you can now put into context the pressure. If the annual budget of our nation is $19 billion, um, 40 years after when it was 25 and the population has more than doubled, then you can understand all the challenges we face, whether it's, it's uh, banditry or farmer's clash or whatever clash we have. Everything is, comes alive. But are we deceiving ourselves? Yes, we are. We are fundamentally deceiving ourselves because we are living a lie. Recently, we issued or invited uh, treasures, bills, treasure bills were being sold at about 22% or something like that for dollars. Where in the world would you get 22% on a dollar? So they now turn around and say it's oversubscribed by 245%. Of course it will be oversubscribed. But at the end of the day, can you pay back? What are you doing with that currency, with the money that would generate 22% to enable you to pay back in 12 months? Now, so you can see a nation that is walking itself with its eyes wide open. There's something I don't understand. So we get, we need, we need to get off this lie that we've been telling ourselves and be real. We have the potential to be one of the greatest nations on earth, but it remains potential if you don't take it to actuality. Delivering the keynote lecture, Dr. John Kaede Fayemi, former governor of Ekiti State, called for the devolution of powers to set the governance model that works for the Federation. In my proposed manifesto for a new Nigeria, structural changes would appear unrealistic in this democratic dispensation. I also do not think we can easily go back to the pre-1966 regional structure or adopt the 54 federating units proposal of the 2014 conference, which I find impractical, no matter the appeal or attraction in some quarters. Rather, our preoccupation should be, how can we make the current structure work better for us in terms of first, our governance system, second, our economy and national productivity, and third, citizenship and inclusion. There may be other issues that should be the object of our restructuring, but I consider these to be the most paramount. Therefore, in my view, restructuring should be less about redrawing the map of Nigeria, but more about building an efficient governance system that is capable of delivering the greater good to the greatest number of our people. And in essence, our desire to make this giant work should be anchored on the principle of devolution of powers. That is, reallocation of powers and resources to the country's federating units. The reason for this are not far-fetched. First, long years of military rule has produced an over-concentration of powers and resources at the center to the detriment of the states. Two, the 1999 constitution, as has been argued by several observers, was hurriedly put together by the departing military authority and was not a product of sufficient inclusiveness. 
part of the focus of such an exercise should be what items should remain on the exclusive legislative list and which ones should be transferred to the concurrent list. Other topical issues include derivation principle, fiscal federalism and revenue allocation, land tenure, local government creation and autonomy. All points considered, the fiscal body of maintaining a largely inefficient and overbloated bureaucracy is a metaphor for the crisis of governance that we're currently experiencing. The event featured a panel session that outlined the key issues that must be addressed to restore Nigeria on the path of productivity and prosperity. We need to ask ourselves, apart from our numbers, what do we want to be giant of? Because nations today are not simply measured on the size numbers of their people. There are nations that are giants in car manufacturing. There are nations that are giants in IT. There are nations that are giants in shipbuilding. There are nations that are giant in medical, nations that are giant in agriculture, and a number of fields. So what actually do we want to be a giant of? Population? I think we should ask ourselves. Let us treat every political idea we have as if we're imploring a sojourn. I'm sure when we're sick, we really don't care about the background of the sojourn that want to treat us. We just want to leave. I think we need to start looking at things that way. And guess what? Politicians, we can play with them as much as we like. My belief is in the people. I believe from the speech the speaker said, Nigeria needs to be decentralized. Devolution of power needs to occur. Digitalization of power needs to occur. But I believe to do it is the people that will create a coalition and force politicians to do it. They will never do it themselves. And, and I think until we get, you know, and it's an onion thing, starting from the elite, starting from those who can, who have the voice to speak, who have the vision to see, then you start to influence your family and all that. I think we need a new coalition. What comes to my mind after the manifesto that has been said is what is to be done is the next step. What is to be done is a new coalition in Nigeria that is devoid of identity politics, that is based on accountability, that is very functional, that can say, this is what we want, how much will it cost, when will it be done? Thank you. You see, we keep on talking about this structure. Maybe we should be very careful about where we talk about structure because there's an assumption being made. That means that the political structure equals the economic structure. That is an idea, but that is also what happens in France. They've been able to manage to make sure that there's a direct correlation between the political class and the economic policies, which influences their foreign policy entirely. In Nigeria, that is not the case. You see, we get so very easily excited. So somebody can tell you that their, their stock market is going well. It's a sign that the government is doing well. Since when did you ever use the stock market to measure the performance? Because there's no symmetry between your economy and your stock market to start with. The, the factors of your economy are not reflected in your stock market. It is only when it does that that you can talk about it. But the more annoying thing is that you say your monetary policy is actually working for you. I say, no, the monetary working is trying its best. We need the fiscal side. The first thing on fiscal is trade and investment. In everything that we've been doing in this government, you've never seen any major position of trade. And you know how you know whether your trade is working? Because you then have to review your HS code. Because your HS codes will tell you everything. Then your tariff structure, down everything is there. So your trade is your number one on your fiscal. Number two is your foreign policy. Any country without looking at that and it must work in tandem, then you cannot be talking about your fiscal side is not reacting. Because which, what is it in your fiscal side? Well, your fiscal side is about development. The event's highlight was the unveiling of the Prince Emeka Obasi Foundation, which is dedicated to increasing access to education for indigenous Nigerian students. The beauty and auspiciousness of today is that virtually all of us gathered here share these ideals. And it is our firm belief that you alongside in the community of Prince's Friends will support the foundation to achieve much. This we believe will be the ultimate tribute we can ever pay to my late husband, Prince Emeka The Deputy Governor of Abia State, His Excellency Dr. John Kaede Faimi, Senator Sheu Sani, and Mr. Lufemi Awoemi MNI, Chairman of ProShare, 
speak on the foundation launch and key takeaways from the discourse. Yeah, it's a, it's a welcome one. Um, his uh, memory lives on. Uh, the number of people who came here today shows uh, what he left behind. And uh, uh, his wife, Dr. Mrs. Uh, Betty Obasi, has been able to um, move on with what uh, Prince Emeka Obasi left behind. And I must say this very program is uh, an educative one. Uh, the lecture uh, has already been one that uh, everyone are looking forward to next year's uh, annual lecture. So it's a good one. Our founding fathers laid a strong foundation for a nation that we were proud of. But those in the position of authority, have they actually laid a foundation for which the younger ones will be proud of? These are questions. The schools we attended are not schools we can take our children to today. The hospitals we were born are not hospitals we can take our children today. So the homes that we used to live as children are not homes to which our children can live today. The challenge before this generation is to stand up and take their country back to hold those in the position of authority to account and to defend the freedom and unity of Nigeria. If there is no national leadership consensus on what Nigeria means, then it's pointless talking about constitution because we need to first have a, a degree of consensus on what we want. Do we want to unmake Nigeria or do we want to remake Nigeria? If we want to remake Nigeria, how do we want to remake Nigeria? And if we agree on how to remake Nigeria, do we want to make it a unitary state? Or do we want to make it a decentralized, devolved state in which resources and responsibilities are devolved to the local level and accountability and transparency are also devolved to the local level? If we want to do that, then all of the other issues will fall in place. Security national development, but you cannot develop what you have not got. That's the problem. We all want to do national development. We want to do economic development, but we don't even have a nation that we want to develop yet. <laughs> so we're putting the cart before the horse. One of the key takeaways for me from the conversation is to understand that every generation has a responsibility for itself to advance a new course and a new argument and to use different tools to achieve it. The tools we use to fight in those days are not necessarily going to be the tools that this generation will need. But that this country remains an ever great country. Let nobody not deny you the fact. This country remains an ever great country. The indices are there. It's not potential. Make no mistake about it. But that it is not working for everybody. Some staff who worked with late Prince Mecca Obasi speak on his life and its impact. Prince Emeka Obasi, as far as I'm concerned, was my mentor, a man that has integrity. He has written about the low and the mighty, and he was very accessible, very humble man. As a matter of fact, when he started um, a Hallmark newspaper, from there, he started the uh, National Mirror. I was one of the young reporters then. From National Mirror, uh, he, he moved on to National Mirror uh, before the business hallmark. So he's a mentor, he's a boss, one of the greatest Nigerians that this country has ever produced. He left a lot of legacies of which today, if you listened very well, you would have had. He, he liked education. He was a, a, a great intellectual. And we imbibed some of uh, his uh, passion in Hallmark. He was a great boss. Dr. Betty Emeka Obasi, wife of late Prince Emeka Obasi, speaks on the initiative. I'm actually very elated. Elated because his friends um, stood by us, are still standing by us, and still working with us. So you see a state where most times you hear when the man passes, everybody turns their back. I haven't experienced that. And I want to give a shout out to all his friends out there. They have stood 
solidly behind us. And in daring to do this is because I have them fanning my wings. I wouldn't dare it if they were not there. So they have been very supportive. And I'm quite grateful because um, making his dream come alive, even after his death, is something that is, is phenomenal. You know, I... I see him, I, he was a man that was passionate about education, he loved books, so part of what we are doing is giving books to selected schools. Um, he was passionate about education, we are trying to see that indigent students get um, scholarships, help from here and there to be able to, to you know, to, he, he, he came from that background, so he never ran away from it. He kept identifying with it and seeing what he could do to make a difference with people from such backgrounds. And um, so Botress, his kind of person, when he died, a lady came to me and said, um, I'm in year one in the university. Your husband has paid for my four years in the university. He had put it back there. I don't even know her. She just was somebody he realized could not do it. And he was certain he was going. So he did it all ahead of time. So paying for it before she even, you know. So it tells you his kind of person. So doing this gives me great pleasure. I'm really, really happy that I'm able to foster something that, you know, gives him tremendous joy. The conversation on if this giant must work, Manifesto for a New Nigeria, is a testament to the late Prince Emeka Obasi's passion, commitment, and dedication to a productive economy as inclusive for all Nigerians. A major takeaway is the need for a consensus on the pathways for nation building and national integration to unlock Nigeria's growth potential.